sure first identify yourself for the record, uh, your name and your employer. Randy Zuff, President of the City of Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce. Tom Brower, Senior Vice President of Occupational Safety and Health, Tyson Foods. If you raise your right hand. However, is that me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You may be seated. Mr. Brower, uh, we have Brandy, we have you on the list first. I just start where you would like as far as um, what you'd like to say about the uh, employer mandated vaccinations and why they need to be done and uh, uh, where the chamber's at on this. Very good. Thank you very much. And thank you, Senator. Thank you, Representative and Chairman Lowry. I appreciate this opportunity to uh, discuss with you a very challenging, very difficult issue for all of us. Uh, there's a lot of irony in this conversation today. Uh, I refer uh, to this morning's headline that we now have 10.1 million jobs open and begging for uh, employment uh, for people uh, across the country. If you do the math on Arkansas's share of just about everything economic, that would mean that we have something crowding 80 to 90,000 open, unfillable jobs in the state at this point. Again, the most in our history. Many businesses, uh, I have been searching my memory over the last 30, 45, 60 days trying to remember one business that is not struggling to find enough hireable people. It is an unprecedented challenge. We are paying record wages. Wages are increasing on nearly a, nearly a daily, but certainly a weekly and monthly basis. So these are all good things. This is, this is what we prayed for, hoped for, coming out of the pandemic after the Trump vaccine uh, created, a, gave us a life raft and a, and a rescue uh, uh, method to, to survive this crazy thing. And uh, we've all been hoping for this kind of growth. And here it is. As a result, or along with that, many supply chains are offering all over the world uh, goods coming from every corner to the U.S. and our goods getting to every corner of the globe. So all these things are problems that have been driven by the COVID vaccine, which has been disruptive to business and to the economies of the world, to put it very mildly. Nearly every employer that I have talked to is doing all they can to be safe in this environment. Safe for their customers and safe for all their employees, suppliers, and interested or related parties. Despite all those efforts, we have strained relationships all across the economy, all across, <coughs> excuse me, all across the state. We heard sad tales in this room yesterday about nurses and the struggles they're dealing with about healthcare employees from the from the loading dock of a hospital to the intensive care or surgery sweeps. Everybody in that sector of the economy is facing unprecedented challenges, difficulties that many are, are finding it just too much to bear and are walking away from good and vital employment relationships. All that's true, all that begs, pulls at our heartstrings, all that is incredibly emotional, but at the same time, at some point, a time comes when hard decisions are necessary. When all you can do is all you can do, including requiring vaccination for employees. And this is the employer's right. Arkansas is an employment will, right to work state, and we urge you, we beg you, not to jeopardize that or to compromise it in any way because it would be a, an astonishing setback to the economic prospects and growth of our, of our state. The proposals that are under consideration not only prohibit private businesses from acquiring their employees to get vaccinated against the deadly COVID-19 virus, but it also, they also, prohibit private businesses 
from even inquiring into the vaccination status of employees. This bill goes against all of the advice of every trusted medical expert of both the state and the federal government. And most importantly, this bill, as I said, is in direct contribution, excuse me, contravention to our state's proud history as an employment at will state. It prohibits private employers from taking the most basic and universally suggested precautions to guard the safety and health of all their employees and the families of those employees. And in doing so, it also prohibits businesses from protecting their valued customers and clients, opening up potential negligence claims by those customers. And finally, it would require private businesses to violate the guidance of the CDC and thus to be in violation of certain OSHA standards. This is a box that we are painting people in if we pursue this path. This would subject those businesses to substantial fines and other penalties. Let me hit just a couple of points on each of the two bills that were, that were uh, uh, under consideration or, or being proposed. The inability to mandate vaccines or require a vaccine status carries significant legal risk for employers, including, but not limited to, the following. Number one, COVID-19 guidance 